What's up mga Cap and welcome to our Cap Unity live streaming kasama si Miss Mel of Adjok International and siyempre Cap Joey of When in Halifax. Ayan mga Cap, so we are live dito ngayon sa ating Canada Filipino community and to our Facebook uh, page When in Halifax. Ayan. So, if you're watching right now, please comment it below and join our discussion, mga ka. So, if you have questions about uh, Canada, how to immigrate here, how to study here, how to bring my kids and family, this live streaming is for you, mga ka. So, join us. So, and then, of course, do a watch party to your profile. Ayan. Miss Mel, tawagin natin si Miss Mel. Miss Mel, kumusta? Kumusta po kayo? Ayan. Hello everyone. Hello Miss Mel. Ha ano happy summer sa iyo diyan. Ang init. Ang Thank init you. dito sa Canada, grabe. <laughs> True. <laughs> Parang Pilipinas lang. Ayun, sa mga nandito na sa Canada, please comment it below how's your experience today? Mainit ba sa inyo ngayon? Kasi dito sa Halifax, napakainit. Yung sa Edmonton, Miss Mel, gaano kainit? Actually, alam ko maaraw sa labas, pero hindi pa ako nakakalabas eh. So, hindi ko alam kung gano'ng kainit ngayon. Ayan. So, pero sobrang init. Pero mga kap, if you are planning or im uh, planning or dreaming to immigrate here, and one of the problem na iniisip nyo, baka sobrang lamig sa Canada, sasabihin ko po sa inyo, hindi naman po masyado. <laughs> Hindi naman masyado. <laughs> Konti lang pag winter time. Pero pag summer, talagang summer din. Random na random mo din ang init. Ang kagandahan lamang, dito sa Canada kapag ganitong summer, yung hangin kahit papano, medyo malamig din ng konti. Ayan. Saka mamimiss mo din eh. So anyway, today mga kap, so our discussion today, of course, nag-live streaming tayo with regards to the student pathway Ang daming nag-message sa akin, Kap, hindi pa ako nakapag-join uh, for personal reason. Kap, hindi ako nakapag-nagising uh, ng maaga. So, uh, sabi ko, pasensya na kasi we don't have a recorded uh, for that that we are planning to post. We are planning to post it pero hindi pa sa ngayon. However, on this live... Sa akin ba? So, on this live streaming, we will do a discussion about the student pathway. So, hihimay-himayin natin. So, kung hindi ka nakasama sa ating free webinar last Monday, 9 a.m., June 15, hindi ka nakasama, so this live, uh, this live streaming is for you. So, our discussion is about student pathway. So, ang unang tanong, Miss Mel, kapag pinag-uusapan ba ng mabilis, quote and quote, mabilis na proseso para makapag-immigrate or para makapunta dito sa Canada is student pathway ba? Well, actually kasi ang student pathway is maganda siyang pathway para magamit mo for your intention to apply for permanent resident later on. Aware naman tayo sa mga iba't ibang klaseng mga program for immigration and we know what is the chances, personally, what, what is your chances na makakuha ng invitation to apply with express entry? So, yun yung usual na nagiging problema. Kasi lahat naman tayo, we aim to be a permanent resident later on. Ano ba ang pinakamagandang program ng government when it comes for permanent resident at wala ka pa dito? Karamihan ng sagot is under express entry. Which is totoo kung na-meet mo naman talaga yung requirements. Ngayon, paano kung hindi? Dapat alam mo kung paano mo rin lalaroin para tumaas yung score mo. Kaya yung iba, they intend to study in Canada kasi mataas yung points na makukuha mo. Mag-open yun ng avenue for a lot of immigration pathway as well for permanent resident. So maganda siyang, kumbaga sa stepping stone, maganda siyang initial steps for your dream to become a permanent resident, especially kung ang position mo is either regulated in Canada or yung mga hindi talaga siya in demand in Canada. Kasi, let's be honest here, kung ang position mo is regulated or hindi siya in demand, 
what are the chances na makakuha ka ng employer na mag sponsor for working permit? Di ba, mas decrease or mas bababa? Okay. Yun yung mga option kung kailan mo dapat tignan ang working permit. I mean, ang student okay. permit, sorry. And, and in kagandahan lang, for me, mga kap, if you're watching right now, if you're thinking about student pathway, so our goal on this uh, this webinar is to give you idea to to help you to decide mag student ba ako or maghihintay ako sa express entry or maghahanap ako ng employer sa caregiver or sa AITP. Sabi nga natin, kapag pinag-uusapan natin mabilis, ang gusto ko lang i-highlight with the student pathway, na, na lagi natin sinasabi, Ms. Mel, is with the student pathway, meron kang control or meron kang hawak mo yung decision. Yun yung pinaka eh. Hawak mo yung decision kung kailan ka pupunta dito sa Canada. Bakit natin nasabi yun? Kasi once na-complete mo na yung mga documents, how, let's say for example, ha, let's assume and let's imagine hawak mo na mga documents mo kumpleto na meron ka ng school, meron ka ng financial na, uh, needs mo na nandyan na. Pwede kang sabihin, next year, punta na ako ng Canada. Diba? So, napaka, yeah. pwede ka mag-decide eh. In, in, in three months, in six months, in one year, in 12 months, pupunta na ako ng Canada kasi eto na yung mga documents na kailangan ko. Paso, eto na yung pera, pasok na din sa proof of funds, pasok na sa tuition fee. So, you, you have your own decision. Ikaw makakapag-decide kung kailan ka pupunta. In comparison to sa express entry, kailangan mataas yung points mo, kailangan mo umabon na sa CRS score, kailangan mag magdasal ng ma maigi kasi sana mabunot, di ba? Sabi natin, yeah. umabot yung CRS score mo, kailangan mong dasal, di ba? Which is, which is lahat naman tayo nagkadasal, pero kailangan doblihin yung dasal na sana, mabunot yung pangalan. With the EIPP and caregiver, kailangan makahalat ng employer, di ba? So, eto yung medyo, medyo kailangan nating uh, pag-isipan in terms of student pathway. Ayan. Miss Mel, Maraming nagsasabi. Ito yung palaging tinatanong. Ayaw ko mag-aral sa Canada kasi uh, napakamahal ng tuition fee at uh, sobrang mahal, sobrang laki. In terms of Miss Mel na mahal mo ng pag-usapan natin, mo, ga, pag kinumpara mo ba yung pag-aaral sa Canada at ikukumpara mo siya sa Australia, New Zealand, United States, ano ang iyong opinion with that? Ano yung sa lahat? Sa Una sa lahat, very competitive ang Canada when it comes sa education. So maganda rin, um, kasi alam naman ng lahat na ang Canada is also under a British um, colony. Kumbaga, sumusunod din tayo sa British. So kaparehas din halos lahat yung curriculum ng Australia. So ang, ang unang pinakamaganda is my edge yung education din ng Canada compared with those countries. Second na biggest advantage is among those countries na binanggit mo, Canada ang pinakamura. Mm -hmm. Pinakamura in terms of tuition fee. And... At the same time, ang mga naki-student pathway kasi marami rin silang benefits na nakakuha. Ang number one is po pwede nilang isama ang kanilang family members. So, sino yung family member na pwede nilang isama? Eh, yun ay ang asawa at ang anak. Unfortunately lang ko ikaw ay single, then definitely ikaw pa lang yung una makakapunta. Pero, don't lose hope kasi once you have the permanent resident status at na-meet mo yung income requirement for those years na required, then definitely you are already allowed to sponsor your parents as well. Correct. And isa, isa din mismo na tinitingnan ko with a student, sabi mo nga, na-mention mo natin, highlight natin yung pinakamura in terms of comparison sa other countries na New Zealand, Australia. Pero ang gusto kong i-highlight doon, Ms. Mel, um, pwede mong isama ang inyong pamilya under student permit. I think yes. that's a good thing. And at the same time, merong maliwanag or malinaw na pathway para maging permanent residence ka. Yes. Yun yung gusto natin. Actually, malinaw siya at the same time, maraming nagbubukas na immigration stream para sa'yo. 
So, mm -hmm. marami opportunity, to be honest. That's right. That's right. And one thing, Miss Mel, aside from the tuition fee, as, as we compare the tuition fee ng student, I, mga if I'm holding my phone, I'm just sharing the live stream in our group. But if you can help me sharing this live para mas maganda yung conversation natin, please do so po. Pakishare po itong live streaming natin sa mga group or any group para mas marami pong marating yung ating uh, live streaming. And of course, maraming salamat doon for allowing us to do live streaming sa Canada Filipino community. We know that through your platform, we can reach more kababayan, more cops to share this free information about Canada. And Ms. Mel, na-compare natin yung tuition fee ng Canada sa other bansa. Ano yung advantage, Ms. Mel, um, ng isang student, kapag nag-aral ba sa Canada, ano yung advantage niya personal-wise, personal growth, and then at the same time, sa immigration perspective. Ano yung advantage pa nag-aral na siya? Actually, maraming advantage. Eh. Una sa lahat is nagbubukas nga ng pathway for permanent resident yung student pathway. At the same time is nakakahabol siya, especially kung halimbawa yung um, profession niya is kailangan mo ng education in Canada. So definitely after you finish your school, then mas malaki yung edge mo na baka uh, pagtaken ka na lang or i-challenge mo na lang yung exam. So it will save time as well for those professional na naghahabol na. Kasi let's be honest here, hindi tayo katulad ng US na kapag ka ikaw is registered nurse sa Pilipinas, mag-take ka ng NCLEX, automatic nurse ka na kagad sa US. Iba ang kalakaran ng Canada. So kung ikaw eh very keen na kailangan ko kagad makapag-registered nurse sa Canada, then student pathway is one of the best program for you. Kasi depende rin naman yan sa tao eh. Mm -hmm. Correct. So yun yung pinaka, aside from Miss Mel, aside from that Miss Mel, I think ang pinaka maganda as, as a parent, ang gusto ko, or sabi na natin, ano, family oriented, ang pinaka gusto ko dito if ever ako mag-student, meron ka ng professional growth kasi kilala yung standard, education standard ng Canada so, pag nag-aral ka, meron ka talagang age, edge, <laughs> age, edad yun. <laughs> meron kang edge sa iba because galing ka or nag-aral ka sa Canada. That's the number one. Pero para sa akin, as a, as a family man or sabi ng pamilya yung priority ko, maganda dito because madadala mo yung iyong pamilya. Magkakasama-sama kayo ng iyong pamilya habang ikaw ay nag-aaral. And I think this is also way para at least habang nag-aaral ka, nagkakaroon ka ng chance na magsama kayo. Kasi most of our OFW cap, kapatid natin, they're working um, years sa ibang bansa para mabigyan yung future yung kanilang pamilya. Eh bakit dalhin mo na lang yung opportunity dito sa Canada, nag-aaral ka, may professional growth ka, may chance na maging permanent residence, Kasama, pa mang, kasama mo pa ang iyong asawa at anak. And dito kayo magsimula ng, ng bagong buhay dito sa Canada. So, I think as a family man, ito yung pinakamagandang way kasi nakapag-aral ka na, may chance ka na maging permanent residence, kasama mo, pa, kasama mo pa ang iyong anak at asawa. Diba? So, it's a win-win. Diba? Actually, um, let me also add on to that one. Yung tinatanong mo sa akin regarding with the advantages of studying in Canada. So, aside for the lower tuition fee, one of the good advantage also is pwedeng magtrabaho ang mga naka-student pathway. So, when it comes doon sa um, principal applicant o yung naka-student pathway, then pwede siyang magtrabaho ng part-time. So, that 20 hours per week. At kung ikaw naman ay nagtatrabaho sa loob ng school, then definitely... <laughs> <laughs> then definitely ay bakit ayaw naman ayan sorry so definitely um, kapag ka school break or nagtatrabaho ka sa loob ng school pwede kang mag full time mm -hmm. other, op uh, other advantage is after mo mag-aral kung qualified yung school na pinasukan mo you're also entitled for postgraduate working permit 
So ano yung ibig sabihin ng postgraduate working permit? Kapag ka nag-aral ka ng isang taon sa public school, then bibigyan ka rin ng government ng one year na postgraduate. Postgraduate means working permit siya, open work permit. No, wala kang restriction. So kung kaya mo magtrabaho ng dalawa, tatlo, apat na trabaho, then it's up to you. Hindi ka pipigilan ng government, wala kang restriction. So yun yung mga ginagamit dapat para makapag-gain ka ng valuable experience for permanent resident. So kung ikaw naman ay nag-aral ng two years, then definitely ang ibibigay sa'yo ng government is three years work permit. Mm-hmm. I, I think yung isa din sa i-highlight natin ni Smell, imagine mo, medyo mura siya, compare, i-wrap up lang natin yung una natin discussion is mura in terms of comparing to other countries. Number two, madadala mo yung inyong asawa at anak. And pangalawa, pwedeng, uh, pangatlo pala, pwede magtrabaho ikaw as a student, pero medyo limited lang yung oras, pero yung husband mo or spouse mo na kasama mo ay pwede magtrabaho, which is nakapag-open work permit siya. Ayan. So if you're not familiar with the open work permit, gusto mo magtanong about open work permit, feel free to comment it below mga kap. And of course, if you're watching on our YouTube channel, maraming salamat. Please comment it below. Do an engagement para alam natin kung saan kayo nanonood, saan po kayo ngayon, anong gusto nyong tanong, feel free to ask questions. So ayan mga kap, madadala mo yung anak, madadala mo yung asawa mo, yung asawa mo pwede magtrabaho because uh, yung spouse mo ay open work permit. So at the yes. same time, as a student, nag-aaral ka, meron ka ding chance na magtrabaho, but then you are limited to 20 hours by weekly mismer or per week? Weekly. Weekly. 20 hours weekly. Ayan. So, Miss Mel, with regards to that, Miss Mel, na mention mo din, sabi mo, pwede magtrabaho na, sabi natin, unlimited hours pag summer break. Yes. Yung estudante. Ayan. Yes. Ayan. So, marami nagtatang sabi ni Miao Miao. Ayan. Hello, Cap, Miss Mel. Ayan. Yan ang gusto natin. Dapat alam natin kung sino nanonood. Marami nanonood sa YouTube. Hindi ko alam kung sino. But then, thank you for engagement. Sabi ni Miao, um, May Miao. Hello po, Cap. And of course, sabi ni Luz Benaventura. Good day, M. Cap, Joey, Miss Mel. Ask ko lang po, mas madali po ba mga PR ang international students sa Alberta PNP. Thanks po. Meron kasing pathway ang Alberta rin for international graduate programming. So as long as na-meet mo naman yung requirements o yung eligibility, madali lang kung na apply Ayan. And another one, sabi ni Your Life Companion. Pero before yan, ito yung comment niya. Sali mi sa ruleta, Sir Joey. Ayan. Wala pa kami ruleta sa Sabado yun. <laughs> Ayan. And, and of course, sabi ni Special K, what's up, Koji? Ayan, a big shout out to you. Mabuhay, Pinoy Canada Immigration. Speaking of, please join our Facebook group. It's Pinoy Canada Immigration Forum. Tinitinan ko yung camera ko. Para ba't ang itim ko? Siguro sa ilaw lang to. Or, <laughs> Hindi, um, maliwanag na yung ilaw ko ngayon. Ah, kaya nga. Kaya pag magdikit tayo, kaya mukha ako mapute. Joke ko lang. <laughs> eh, Nakakomment ako doon kasi <laughs> nagbilag kasi ako summer eh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hindi pa hindi pa malabas na hindi ako nakakalabas ng bahay. <laughs> <laughs> Kala mo puti yung pala putla lang. <laughs> so ayan. Pero <laughs> ayan, sabi ni your life companion, yes, I agree. Ayan, student pathway is the best is the best and self uplifting one. But expensive though, but worth it. Ayan. Pag-usapan natin Miss Mel yung expensive later on. Balikan natin itong question nito. Sabi ni Miao Miao, hello Cap. And good AM Cap, join Miss Mel. Ask ko lang po, nasagot na natin. Si Geraldine Somalio, good day po Cap, Miss Mel. Watching from home. Kapag student pathway, kailangan, kailan? Pwede mag-apply ng PR, Miss Mel. Kailan ba pwede mag-apply ang stu- isang student pathway, Miss Mel? Ang una kong tanong is, ano ba ang PR application na a-applyan mo? Kasi kung nag-aaral ka pa lang, possibly na pwede ka na mag-apply ng PR. Depende kung anong klase ng pathway. Ayan. And dun tayo babalik sa create a strategic plan. So the, our best advice, mag, uh, DIY, especially to all DIY, DIYers natin, create a strategic plan kapag kayo nag-student 
Kasi all our goal, when you're applying for student, our goal is to become a permanent residence. Diba? And another one, we have Danny, Danny Girl. Danny Girl TV. Hello, Cap and Miss Mel. What if? Si Open Work Permit, nagkaroon ng employer. Pwede po ba siya na lang mag-apply for PR then stop na si student mag-aral? Pwede ba yung Miss Mel? Um, to make the story short, pwede. Pero very tricky. Mm -hmm. So, hindi ka hagad dapat mag-stop hanggat wala kang authorization to stay in Canada. Mm -hmm. Para hindi ka magkakaroon ng problema. Ayun. So, thank you, Ms. Mel. Eh, sabi nga natin yan, bago ka tumigil, sabi ni Ms. Mel, dapat pasigurado. Yes. Yeah. Pasigurado in the sense na hawak na hawak mo na yung PR card mo. Yung ginaganan mo na sa mukha mo. Tapos True. yung, di ba? I mean, you don't know eh. Dapat pasigurado ka talaga. Actually, And, lagi ko nga sinasabi, kahit sa mga client ko na, kahit na meron ka na lahat, approval, employer, hanggat wala sa hawak mo o hanggat hindi ka nakakaapak ng Canada, huwag mo nang pakasigurado dahil marami pang pwedeng mangyari. That's true. And a, big, a, a very good example, Miss Mary, yung COVID natin, di ba? Yes. It, it's a yes. very good example, uh, sabi nga natin, exaggerated example, pero yun, walang nag-expect na merong COVID and boom. <laughs> di ba? Oh. I mean, Ito apekto. yung mga bagay kasi na walang makakapaghanda. Wala. Ah, yeah. Kahit sabi natin, handang-handa ka na, pero meron pa rin yan. Di ba? I always say this, uh, expect the unexpected. Yes. Yeah. And becoming Kanoy. Hello, Cap from Alberta. Pa-shout out naman. <laughs> Hello po. Si Josie nanonood sa ating uh, Canada Filipino Community Facebook group. Ayan, Facebook page pala. Hello po, newbie here. I'm currently studying here in Ontario as a career program. I'm permanent holder now, pero hindi pa po ako nakapagtrabaho since I arrived here two years ago. Makapagtrabaho kaya agad ako after my studies? Oo naman po, kasi legally, pwede ka naman talagang tumanggap ng kahit na anong trabaho kasi hindi mo naman na kailangan ng authorization. So mm -hmm. yes, pwede ka, pwede ka makapagtrabaho kagad. Mm -hmm. Ano ito, Ms. Mel? I'm a permanent holder, pero makapag agad after my studies. I think permanent resident status na siya ngayon. Mm -hmm. The only problem is, nung dumating siya, hindi kagad siya nakapag-work. Instead, nag-aral siya. Oh, I see. Ayan. Thank you, thank you, Ms. Mel. Thank you, Jocelyn, for your questions. And of course, si... Al Monela, so wala itong absent kung may complete attendance. Ito na yun. Ito na yung may award. <laughs> Good day, MCAP. Join me, small student pathway po ba? Need pong dalhin yung proof of funds na i-declare mo pang nag-apply papunta ng Canada. This, this is a very good question. Definitely, it's a yes. Kaya mo siya declare it means may access ka doon sa account na yun. So anything na may pangangailangan ka, madali ka makakakuha ng pera. So, Minsan may officer sa border na talagang hahanapin ka sa'yo yung perang yan. Correct. Ayan, before we go to the question and answer mga kap, I just want to promote the finderspace.com, the classified ads. And if you want to post your product or service, go to the finderspace.com and post your product and service. And if you want, if you're a business owner, you want to advertise on the finderspace, just message Canada, Filipino Community at gmail.com. Ayan. Hanapin nyo lang po si Kuya Don Ibarra. Ayan. So if you want to advertise, if you're a business owner, please visit or email Canada, Filipino Community at gmail.com at hanapin nyo po si Kuya Don Ibarra. Ayan. If you want to advertise or you want to post your product and service, lalo na ngayon na online lahat, feel free to visit Finderspace. .com. Ayan. Maraming salamat, Kuya Don, for allowing us do a live streaming on your platform, Canada Filipino Community Facebook page. Maraming salamat. Kasi marami, tong, marami dito mga Filipino community na uh, very loyal. Kaya maraming salamat kasi nare-reach out natin sila. Salamat, Kuya Don. And sabi ni Joy, tagig. Yan, yun lang yung... Magandang engagement na yun, taga-tagig. Yan, shout out sa mga taga-tagig. Joy, gusto. 
Yes. Sabi ni May, thank you po. And your life, sayang walang ruleta today. <laughs> Miss, hello, Miss Mel, si Emmanuel Manahan po. Yan. Thank you po sa free assessment. Thank you, Cap, sa live streaming. More power. Si Danica Girl, if RM po sa Pinas, ano pong pwedeng course na kunin para eventually maging nurse din sa Canada? Actually, immigration perspective, karamihan ang kinukuha nila is practical nurse. Pero mas matutulungan ka ni Joey dahil siya ay isa ring nurse. So, ano ba ang pwede nilang kunin? Uh, hindi po ako nag, uh, nag-aral dito pero most of the courses na na-meet na ko at nakilala, uh, nakatrabaho ko dito is palliative care. Yun yung kinukuha nila sa Toronto. So personally, hindi talaga ako nag-take ng, uh, ng study o hindi ako nag-aral dito kasi I, my process here is through the Nova Scotia Provincial Nominee. But majority na nakatrabaho ko sa nursing home, ay nag-aral sila sa Ontario, which is yung kursong kinuha nila ay palliative care. So, yun. So, with regards to the school, hindi po natin alam. However, however, eto, meron tayong nilulutong kape. Ayan, ito na yun eh. This is very exciting. So, minilutong kape, this is another program that we created with Miss Mel and our CAP Unity. So, on Thursday, this will be our first time to do a uh, Kapihan. Um, kapihan sa when in Halifax. So the concept of the Kapihan sa when in Halifax, it will be a Zoom meeting and at the same time, it will be a live streaming. So yung mga kasama sa Zoom meeting, they will have the opportunity to ask personal question sa ating invited guests. And guess what? Our first ever, first, 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 invited guest on Thursday. Sa Thursday na to ay si Ian Rapadas. Ayan. So Ian Rapadas will be our first special guest sa ating kapihan sa so when in Halifax. It will be it will be Thursday 10 p.m. Halifax time. It will be 11 a.m. So anong gagawin natin? I'm going to throw some questions with Ian. Ian will do some story, timeline, process niya kung paano siya naging successful EIPP applicant and everyone that joined our Zoom meeting or webinar they will have also the opportunity to ask personal question to Ian and then of course sa ating live streaming so it's very exciting kasi para siyang virtual talk show ayan so ang pangalan niya para matandi, matan, madaling tandaan it's top pihan <laughs> Ayan. And of course, Miss Mel will also join us. Hindi ko pa na natitimbrehen si Miss Mel, pero napaka- Ako, very excited ako makita si Ian. Ayan. So, talagang looking forward ako dyan dahil before pa mangyari lahat ng to, lagi nakakausap ko si Ian eh. So, marami na ako alam tungkol sa kanya. So, very for, uh, looking forward ako na talagang makausap siya. So, ganun tayo yung kalakas kay Miss Mel because yung schedule natin, hindi ko pa personally na may message kay Miss Mel, available ka ba? Ganun tayo kalakas eh. Talagang inaalis niya yung mga appointment niya para sa atin. Di ba, Miss Mel? Alam niyo naman yan. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> kaya kaya nitong live streaming na to eh. Miss Mel, like tayo, go! O, di ba? Go, go, lang ka palagi sa atin. Hashtag resident immigration consulta ng Pinoy Canada Immigration. Walang iba kundi si Miss Mel. Ayan. Thank you! And, and of course, we have another question. Sabi ni Joyce. Yes, that's what I mean. Thank you so much. Ayan. And of course, sabi ni Becoming Kanoy. Salamat po, Kap. Dati kasi ako, uh, dati kasi ako dyan sa Halifax. Na miss ko Nova Scotia. I live somewhere in Olive Street. Thank you and more power. Ayan. So, na, kumusta naman ang Halifax sa inyo? I think kung ikaw noon ay nandito, Ngayon, totally different na, especially of the number of Filipino na nandito na. Filipino community dito sa Halifax ay sobrang lumalaki in terms of numbers. Ang dami na. And of course, we have Mary Gladys to be home. Hello, Cup Joey and Miss Mel. Hello. Sabi ni Joey, hello, Cup Miss Mel watching in YouTube. May info na po ba sa list ng school? na nag-o-offer ng online course eligible for PGWP. Mas mura po bang tuition fee? Tagig lang. 
na-send ko. <laughs> Tagig lang yung na-send niya. <laughs> Lahat po ng school ngayon is eligible for online courses. Mm-hmm. Ayan. So just make sure lang na bago kayo mag-aral is may visa na po kayo. Ayan, y- yun yung... Ayan, yung ayan. Ayan. Ako ng inquiry na hindi pa po approve yung visa ko. Pero pwede na po ba akong mag-aral? Kasi baka pag nag-aral ako, ma-approve kagad yung visa ko. Huwag niyo pong gawin yan kasi sayang mo inyong pera. Ayun. So, kailangan natin i-take note mga kap before kayo mag-enroll online. Make sure that you have still the valid student permit visa. Ayan. We have another question. Sabi ko mismo may babalikan ako kasi gusto kong pag-usapan yun. Um... Regarding sa student, hindi ko na balikan. Pero we have another question from Kay Lim. Hi po, Cap and Miss Mel. Question lang po, after nang ma-approve ng 3 years PGWP, importante po ba makakuha agad ng work experience under NOC 0 A and B? Definitely yes. Kasi yan yung magiging pathway mo for permanent resident. Mm-hmm. Yan. Another one, we have Alan Monelas. Miss Mel, pwede po ba through GIC ipasok yung pera? May maximum po bang pwedeng i-deposit through GIC? Any question kung anong mag- any suggestion kung anong magandang ipasok ang pera if ayaw maghawak ng pera papunta ng Canada? Pwede ka naman mag-open ng GIC pero know the advantage and disadvantage of opening a GIC. Bakit? Kasi pag nag-open ka ng GIC for student, pwede naman na magpasok ka doon ng 10,000 Canadian Dollars pero hindi mo yun kagad mawi-withdraw pagpasok mo dito. Ayan. Thank you, Ms. Ma. Ayan. Another, uh, in ito, ay, inahanap ko yung isang question. Sabi ko, wabalikan ko at pag-uusapan natin, Ms. Mel. Uh, hindi ko na mahanap. But anyway, Miss Mel, with regard to the student pathway, and mga kap, if you have questions, feel free to ask questions and join us to our new program. We have a Kapihan sa Wen in Halifax. So the lineup inter our lineup special guest this week is Ian Rapadas. Next week, Thursday, it will be Jeremy Mendoza and Kiko Fajardo. So they will share their story, they will share their timeline, they will share their tips and advice, their personal experience from application up to nandito na sa Canada. So sa lahat ng mga cup natin that are watching right now, tune in po kayo sa ating Facebook page when in Halifax and I'll post the link to join. So you have two options, you can join the webinar or you can join the live streaming. If you are you want to ask question Personal question to our guest. Just join the webinar, mga kap. Um, and that's it. And may requirement yun, Miss Mel. Ano yun? Hindi makaka-join kung walang tasa at kape. Ay, walang kape. <laughs> Dapat meron kape kasi mag-group selfie tayo. Diba? So, hey, kailangan hey. kape. Kasi kapihan, ang concept natin is it's a virtual coffee shop. So, kailangan may kape. So, after, diba? Yan. So, that's our... Um, that's our requirements. Kailangan nyo pong merong kape. Ayan. We have another question from B. Monzo. Hindi pa lumalabas yung question niya dito. But anyway, mga ka, please join our Pinoy Canada Immigration Forum. Join us. Ang dami na natin, Ms. Mel. Almost 10,000 na rin, no? Wow. 10,000. Pa 11,000 na. Ikaw na lang yung inihintay, mga ka. If you're watching right now, hindi ka pa nag-member. Wala ko ako. <laughs> oh, si Ms. Mel, hindi member <laughs> <laughs> yeah. May mga question ako nakikita pero hindi pa lumalabas dito sa ating uh, stream yard. But anyway, Miss Mel, another question with a student pathway, Miss Mel. Ang tanong lang is, ano yung magiging advice mo to all our cap na nag-iisip na mag- mag-aral dito sa Canada? Ano yung kailangan nilang ihanda? Ano yung mga requirements na kailangan with a student pathway? Number one na mahirap-hirap na ihanda is financial. So, una sa lahat, kasi may, malalaman mo naman kagad kung magkano yung kakailanganin mong amount. So, typically, kapag ka ikaw ay mag-isa is 1.2. So, kapag ka may kasama ka ng asawa or may kasama ka ng mga anak, din nag add up yun. So, let's say, ang kailangan mong pera is 1.2. Doon ka muna mag-focus. 
kapag ka, although may mga chances naman kasi na hindi mo hawak lahat ng pera pero meron mga gustong tumulong sa iyo. So just make sure lang na alam mo kung kailan sila makakatulong at kung kailan sila hindi makakatulong sa iyong application. Ang pinaka-highlight lang kapag ka ikaw ay mag-aaral sa Canada, unang-una sa lahat, kung hindi ka financially ready, mm-hmm. mahihirapan ka once na makapasok ng Canada. So yun muna yung isettle mo. Siguro mag-ipon ka muna ng bala. Kasi kahit na physically ready ka, kung financially hindi ka ready, hindi ganun kadali ang mangyayari sa'yo dito. So yun muna. And then the second one is, yung kumbaga yung strategic planning nga na tinatawag natin saan ka ba mag-aaral anong course ang kukunin mo after mo mag-aral ano gagawin mo paano ka makakakuha ng permanent resident dapat meron kang as much as possible plan A hanggang plan B siguro para at least kung hindi man mag-work meron kang back up to the backup that's right yeah. Yeah. i think that's very important miss with regards to student pathway hindi lang yung Aral na ako, bahala na. Hindi pwedeng ganun eh. I think para to be successful, if you're thinking just to study, then okay lang, wag kang mag-create ng strategic plan because your plan is to study, di ba? Yes. Do it. But if your plan is to be a permanent residence with your family, make sure you have plan. Kung pwede nga plan A to Z, do it. Just to make sure na magiging permanent resident ka. And to you have a successful strategic plan, is you should have an equipped knowledge. Siyempre, dito lang yung sa Pinoy Canada Immigration Forum. <laughs> Ayan, yes. may pa, no? So speaking yeah. of, um, if you want also to learn more about the different programs, ano yung mga programs, Miss Mel, Adjunct International, um, Adjunct International uh, with Miss Mel, ay meron po tayo mga uh, book, uh, free webinars. So ito, just go to the book, your free webinar. Nakikita niyo po, meron po tayong mga schedules so natapos na natin yung June 15. So next will be June 22, uh, 9 a.m. Manila time about PNP programs or provincial nominee programs. And of course, pag-usapan din natin sa June 29 will be the express entry. So I strongly suggest you cannot create a strategic plan kung wala po kayong equip na um, informations. And information, hindi lang basang information, from a licensed immigration consultant. So I tra- strongly suggest, sinasuggest namin, magka-strategic plan kayo. Paano kayo makakaroon ng mag- strategic plan kung wala kayong information? ba? So yun. Yeah. Yun lang naman. Uh, sabi ni Monson, Monson, good day. Cap Joey, Miss Mel, greetings from Cavite. Ano po kaya ang best pathway sa Canada para sa isang hotel front desk agent with one new year work experience sa US like me. My IELTS na and West are ready also. Ayan. These are the type of example na kailangan mo ng strategic planning. Bakit? Dahil number one, sa application na papasukin mo, hindi mo kailangan ng IELTS and West. Kasi hindi ka magka-qualify for express entry. Um, I'm very familiar when it comes sa mga US applicants because as like you, nag-J1 din ako no kabataan ko. <laughs> Joke lang. <laughs> so, uno sa lahat, ang front desk is part of semi-skilled in Canada. Hindi po siya kasali sa high-skilled. So, hindi po yan magka-qualify for express entry. So, mababaliwala yung IELTS at saka West mo kung hindi ka kagad makakahanap ng employer at hindi ka kagad makakapag-apply for permanent resident. Ang pinaka-best para magamit mo lahat yan is AAPP or RRNIT kasi magagamit mo yan dalawang yan. Pero aside do sa mga option na yun, pwede ka rin mag-working permit. Or kung may budget ka naman, you can also go under the student pathway. Mm-hmm. Ayan. So, Miss Mel, uh, y- yung experience mo na mag- nag-J1 sa United States, ano yun, 10 years ago yun, Miss Mel? 
Grabe naman. Mga 12 naman. <laughs> Sorry na, mabata kita. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hindi ko pa alam kung sasabihin, ano sasabihin ko pa talaga. Sabihin <laughs> ko pa talagang 13 years o 12 na lang. Bawasan ko lang isang taon. Binawasan ko lang isang taon. <laughs> Ay, binawasan ko naman yun ng mga lima. No, tatlong taon lang yung hindi ko sinabi sa'yo. Ah, tatlong taon lang. May discount na. Ayan. <laughs> Ayan. Sabi ni Mary Near. Mary Near. Hello po, Cap, Miss Mel. Ask ko lang po sana, paano i-convert ang existing tourist visa? Kasi plan akong mag-apply ng student visa. Meron akong valid tourist visa. Pwede ba yun, Miss Mel? I-convert yung tourist to student hindi po po pwede. So, po pwede kang mag-apply sa outside Canada pero mas mataas pa rin ang chance na i-refuse doon sa application at paalisin ka muna ng Canada. Yan. Yeah. And I think, balikan ko yung sinabi mo, Ms. Mel, one of the best tip na pwede mong ibigay, uh, bibigay sa mga cap natin nanonood right now. If you're thinking about student, planuhin at yung financial, especially sa financial. Napakalaki, but... Pag sinag-usapan natin yung pinakamalaki, don't be discouraged mga kap. Yan ang tinatawag natin upfront up cost. But if you have family and kids, worth it talaga yon Dahil may mga benefits ka na hindi mo nakikita. Kala mo, ah, itong gagastusin ko. But in the long run, ah, mas maganda pala sa Canada. Example ko lang child benefits, free education, health care that you can enjoy also. Retirement kapag nag-retire ka dito sa Canada. So, ito yung mga kailangan natin i-consider. So, masabi ko, word of investment naman if ever mag-aaral ka. ba diba? And other way, your life companion, one year course po cap, MML, solid din siya for PR pathway. Or much better, to take two years, hindi nung coffee ni Cap Joey. <laughs> um. Mas maganda para sa akin lagi ang two-year course. Bakit? Kasi three years yung postgraduate working permit na kasama. Ano yung ibig sabihin nun? Mas mahaba yung time mo. Hindi ka kukulangin ng time na makapaghanap ng trabaho na gusto mo, makapag ng one-year work experience. Kung sakali man magkaroon ng delay, you have enough time. Ano yung possible na mga delay? Especially sa mga young family. Number one, pwedeng mabuntis ang asawa mo at huminto magtrabaho. E kung siya yung naka-student visa o siya yung primary applicant, then definitely maaapektuhan o makakain niya yung uh, duration ng kanyang PGWP. So at least magkaroon man ng problema, marami kang avenue na pwede mong, po pwede kong gawin to, po pwede ako makapag-antay nang hindi ka masyadong stress. May, may allowance kang oras, yes. diba? Another one, Miss Mel, hindi makahanap ng trabaho or hindi makapag-PR. At least you have time pa. Hindi ka, ang tawag ito, hindi ka magmamadali. Although, dapat magmadali ka. <laughs> Pero at least meron kang time. I mean, may allowance ka, di ba? So, yun. And another one, sabi niya, ang tindi ng kape. Oo, mga kape. Kaya, join us Thursday at uh, 10, nalilito na naman ko, 11 a.m. Halifax time, 10 p.m. po sa Manila. Join us, mga kape. So, it will be a kwentuhan lang, kwentuhan with a coffee, a virtual coffee. So, this is a very unique way to have an engagement to everyone. Kasi sa live streaming, it's a one-way communication, although we read your comments, pero dito sa webinar na to, magkakaroon tayo ng engagement, especially with our guests. ba? Diba? Yes. Naku, exciting yung kapian session. Ian Rapadas, yung muntik ng di matuloy. Ayan. <laughs> Uh, ano to si Danny Girl eh? Ano to sa Pinay Canada Immigration Forum natin? And of course, si Jeremy, na successful AIPP. Ayan, totoo yes. po yun. And of course, si Kiko, ang hobby ni Miss Joy Fajardo. Yes po. So from uh, PEA po sila, Kiko. The reason why, there's two reasons kung bakit ko sila minerge yung dalawa. Because they're both AIPP. Magkakaibigan po silang dalawa, Jeremy and Kiko. And at the same time, we will have at least two perspectives ng different places. Kasi si Jeremy is nasa Cape Breton. That's four hours drive from us. And si Kiko naman and Joy will be uh, from PEI. So it will be from Halifax, I think, four to five hours drive from us. And different province po yun. So at least, pwede rin yung itanong doon, ano yung pamumuhay sa PEI, ano pamumuhay sa Cape Breton. Because if you're planning about... um planning to apply sa EIPP at nakakuha kayo ng employer from Cape Breton at least, pwede na yung itanong kay Jeremy. Jeremy, 
Bundok ba ang Cape Breton? Kumusta naman ang PEI? Kumusta ang Pilipino doon? Kumusta ang trabaho doon? So you can ask those questions on our kapihan sa When in Halifax. Ayan. It will be on Thursday na. Dalawang tulog na lang. Sabi ni Grace, Sarah, nurse po ako, ate. R ano? Sorry. Sorry. Mali, mali. Ulit, ulit. Nurse po ang ate. Ko, paano ko? Ang ate ko. <laughs> nurse po ako, ate. Parang nagtanong lang, no? Nurse po ako, ate. <laughs> mali, mali. Nurse po ang ate ko, paano po kung mag-apply siya sa Canada at makahanap siya ng employer, pwede po ba niya akong i-accompany or isama? Pwede ba, Miss Melion? Hindi po. Dahil una sa lahat, nasa legal age na yung kapatid mo at hindi ka niya asawa or anak. Sila lang yung uh, family o yung immediate family na tinatawag. Kung wala, single pa ang ate mo, then definitely pwede siyang pumunta dito on her own at pagdating ng panahon na makakuha siya ng permanent resident at mamit niya yung income requirement, then pwede nga i-sponsor ang parents mo. Kung by that time is less than 22 years old ka at wala ka pang asawa, then pwede kang isama ng parents mo. Mm -hmm. Yun yung nakakalungkot lang mismo with regards to Canada immigration is walang chance na makuha mo yung iyong kapatid. Right, Miss Mel? Actually, before nagbabas ang government. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately mm -hmm. lang, meron din naman pathway na tinatawag na lonely Um, nakalumot ako yung mismong pangalan ng program pero uh, it's for lonely Canadians mm -hmm. pero para mag-qualify ka doon dapat si ate mo is hindi magkakaroon ng asawa dito at wala kayong relatives sa buong sa Canada ngayon. so mayroon pero, din chance pero may yeah, pero. Ang, ma ang mahirap lang doon kung uh, buhay pa ang parents dapat si parents mo na ang, ang sponsoran hindi kagad ikaw Ayun. So, yun. Kasi sa United States, I, I, I'm not sure, pero pwede yatang kunin yung kapatid. It takes years with letter X. 40 years, to be honest. Ilang years? 40. 40 years, o oh, ba diba? At least, pwede. 40 years lang, ha? <laughs> so, yun, no? eh, kapag ikaw ay nag-asawa sa US, Wala. hindi ka na rin pwedeng sponsoran. Yun. Yun, totoo yun. So, ayan, mga kap. So, at least, if you have idea with regards to mga kapatid, And I think the best way also to look for your pathway, malay mo, meron ka din chances, di ba? Try to explore some programs. Malay mo, naghihintay ka ng hope sa kapatid mo, eh yun pala may malaki ka pala ng pag-asa sa ibang programs. Pasok ka pala sa ibang program, di ba? Yes. Sabi ni Danica, ayan, excited po ako, and of course, ito. Sabi ni Jing Balabat, Good morning, Cap Joey Miss Mel. I'm considering Holland College. As my plan B, since I'm waitlisted sa Material Engineer Technology and Petroleum Engineering Technology with Nate. Ayan. Kilala mo, Miss Mel, ang Holland College? Diyan din yan? Well, actually, we are an agent of Holland College as far as I know. Ayan. So please connect with Miss Mel through the website, Adjok International Gym. Baka makatulong si Miss Mel sa inyo. And it kasi... Kasi uh, kasi para siyang one year if mag-antay ako ng full 2021 intake. Partner ninyo po ba ang Holland College? Ayan. As far as I know, but, um, i-message mo ako sa aming Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Message siya mismo on Facebook page is facebook.com slash Adjok International. I remember talking to Holland College eh. Ayan. If sa IP naman po, what is the best IP and province So work experience namin. My husband is my husband as excavator or heavy equipment operator. Actually, anywhere in Canada except for Toronto, Ontario. Yeah. Yeah. And we have also another one. At ako naman ay technical support representative currently working as insurance supporting hybrid product of the largest search engine. Hulaan ko to Google. <laughs> Ayan. <laughs> Sorry. Ay, that means again. And we have also Monsoon. Uh, Follow-up question po sa hotel front desk agent kanina. I've been sending resumes through AIPP since January, even before lockdown. Pero wala pong feedbacks from hotels. Any recommendations po? 
one of the reason kung bakit it's because in demand din yung mga position na yan when it comes sa mga local workers. So, for the employer, siguro number one is i-specify mo kagad or ayusin mo ang iyong resume and cover letter. And definitely, even though employer, kahit na hindi sila nag from outside, if they really like your resume, then definitely may pag-asa pa rin naman na mahal ka nila. Actually, actually, medyo mahirap, totoo, but don't take it as negative. Make it as a challenge. Try to review your application. Baka mayroong problema sa resume. And I already created a video about it. Please watch the video, yung template. Nagahanap po kayo ng resume template, a free template. Canadian resume platform uh, format. Please watch the video on my Uh, uh, YouTube channel po, yung free template. So this, asigurado, asigurado ko, 100%, it's a Canadian format because this is from a Canadian government uh, resources. So watch that video step by step kung paano gamitin yung free template. Kasi baka Miss Mel, nagkakaroon silang problema kasi hindi nila pinafollow yung Canadian format ng resume. Malay mo, 10 pages. Diba? I mean, worst to worst example, but who knows, di ba? So, I think the best advice, nahihirapan kayo, try to review ano yung problema, how to improve your resume, kailangan ko bang paikliin, kailangan ko ba direct to the point. If ever hindi ako nakakuha ng resume, try to review your cover letter. Bakit hindi sila nahuhook? Bakit hindi sila nag-i-engage? Baka may problema sa email mo, yung email mo pumupunta sa spam. ba? Diba? So, yes. or maybe yung email mo, mahirap i-email kasi nakalagay. 60-009, na may number sign pa, tapos smiley, hindi makapag-reply kasi ang hirap i-email. Diba? Actually, most common na nakikita kong problema, yung I at saka yung L. Kapag kaiba yung font na ginamit, oh. yung L minsan nagiging 1, mm-hmm. or yung 1 nagiging L. Mm-hmm. And I think, Miss Mel, very, very, to make it easy para at least ma- maiwasan, yung mistake, one thing that I learned from Isens na nag-aaral din ako ng resume is magawa kayo ng email na pangalan nyo. Kasi most of the business owners and HR palagi nag a yung pangalan. Right, Miss Mel? Kahit lang siguro Joey, yeah, joey at gmail.com, di ba? Or jo- yeah. Joey and then like your last name at gmail.com, something like that. At least madalang, madaling ma- ma- matandaan. Diba? Hindi yung may nakalagay ano, jo- Joey Guapo. Yung talaga ano, Joey, eh, Cap Joey Guapo at Gmail. Parang walang maniniwala. Ano? Wala. Kahit ako hindi ako mag-i-email. W- wala nga nag-like. <laughs> <Sabi ka? laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's a common. Like for me, yung email ko po when I was high school, yun po yung Facebook page, uh, Facebook email ko. Hindi ko ginagamit yun sa aking pag-apply ng trabaho kasi napaka-unprofessional yung email. Kasi high school pa ko nun eh. So ngayon, meron akong specific email for my application. Meron akong email for my banking. Hiwa-hiwalay po yung email na yan. Now I know, pag nag-bip yan, ah, yan, trabaho yan. So, it's a big example also. And number, uh, your contact number. Sometimes may mga employer na hindi kaya matawagan kasi yung nilagay niyong number ay walang international code. Mga simpleng bagay, di ba? Gusto kang tawagan pero hindi ka matawagan. And also use the WhatsApp and Viber, di ba? Para matawagan kayo. Kasi may mga employer din na gusto kayong tawagan pero walang means of or way para kayo tawagan kasi yung nilagay niyong number is simula sa uh, anong, sim- anong number na Miss Mel sa Philippines. 0915. 091. Naalala. <laughs> na ano? 0910 na, 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 na ngayon, Joey. Ano na ano, na? Ano, 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 0910 na ngayon. Ay, 091. Ah, shit. Naalala. Nakahala tatuloy, you know. Pero yun, uh, I mean, try to consider that one. Baka may tumatawag, pero hindi kayo makontakt. ba? Diba? Try to put it in your cover letter. Hey, meron pa kong WhatsApp. You can call me. Miss Mel, di ba pwede naman maglagay kung ano yung convenient time to call, if ever? Kasi yung time difference din, ba? Diba? So, may mga consideration din kayong kailangan ilang. Always, always mga ka consider yung time difference natin. If you're looking dito sa Nova Scotia, 
11 hours yung time difference natin. Gabi sa inyo, umaga sa amin. So, yun lang. Sayang. And of course, kung merong mga, ano, check your spam. May mga pumapasok sa spam din, di ba? Sabi ni Christine, and of course, we have already five minutes remaining mga cap. I think we will, uh, last question si Christine Centeno. Hello po, Cap Joey Misman. Magandang araw po. Ask ko lang po if Baker from Team Hortons with two years experience is, is pwede mag-apply as federal skilled trade worker. Salamat po sa pagsagot. Una sa lahat, yan ba ang posisyon mo sa iyong LMIA or work permit as a baker? If yes, then po pwede ka naman mag-apply ng skill trade as long as meron red seal holder ka. Ayan. And thank you, Ms. Mel. Ana, ayan. Napakabilis ng oras, Ms. Mel, no? Yes. Ayan. Ayan, mga kap, maraming salamat for joining us today. Ayan, maraming maraming salamat. Ang daming mga nag-engage, ang daming mga nagtangon, mag, mga nag, madaling mga nagtanong. Maraming maraming salamat. Before we end this live streaming, mga kap, please um, support finderspace.com. If you are here in Canada, if you want to sell your products, your buy and selling business, or maybe you just want to, to sell something, Use the finderspace.com. It's proud Filipino made. <laughs> the one Filipino. And of course, if you want to advertise as a business owner, you want to advertise, please message or email Don through Canada Filipino Community at gmail.com. So kung meron KGG dito sa Canada, meron din tayo finderspace.com. So please post your ads. It's free. Just post it for free. And dito, yeah, find the space. Ayan. And of course, if you want to message Miss Mel, feel free to message or visit Miss Mel through adjunctinternational.ca. And meron po tayo mga upcoming webinar this coming June 22. It's about Provincial Nominee Program or PNP. And of course, on June 29, it, it will be an express entry. So join our free webinar and you will learn a lot of information. Ayan mga kap. So, ang bilis-bilis ng oras, hindi natin namamalayan, naka one-hour live streaming na tayo. Tayo, and of course, mga kap, before we end this live streaming, join our cap unity. Join our caregiver, AITP, student, OFW, cap unity. And of course, our Pinoy Canada Immigration Forum. Kasama din natin dyan sa forum na yan si Ms. Mel. Ms. Mel is very active to answer all your inquiries. And to everyone that are answering, sharing their experience, their insights, maraming salamat po. Ayan, Miss Mel, any message before we end our live streaming? Wala naman po. Uh, thank you po sa inyong support. Ha. So keep sharing this video uh, para malaman din po ng mga ibang mga gustong pumunta ng Canada na meron po kaming live Q&A ni Joey ng weekday din. Ito na yun. Ito na yun. This is it. I-announce na natin. Ito po yung official uh, schedule natin ng ating live streaming. Anyway, mga kap, join us in our kapihan sa so When in Halifax, our very special guest, Ian Rapadas. Bring your coffee. That's the only ticket. Bring your own coffee. Thank you, mga kap. Bye-bye.